What's going on, guys? And for the win here, we are back with our franchise mode as the Ottawa Senators. And uh, here we are at the trade deadline. We were doing pretty decent for a while, but we've definitely fallen back down. Uh, it's not a complete tank, but we are not making the playoffs. And uh, this is uh, the third year, so this is the last year where we can have 12 picks. I saw in the comments, uh, maybe I was supposed to have uh, only be doing nine by now, but I think... Uh, I believe it was for three years that we were allowed to have 12 picks. So this is the last year of that. And next year, we're only going to be able to have nine picks and only three in the first two rounds, etc. So, yeah, now we do have one pick slot. We wanted to kind of grab a first. I was thinking about Tampa's, but something that was pointed out. Yes, uh, Tampa's actually only one point out of that uh, next divisional spot, which, uh, uh, yeah, I didn't notice. So that's a very good point. Um is that, yeah, they're out of the playoffs now, but they could easily get back in by uh, grabbing a floor, uh, the spot from Florida. So, yeah, maybe they're not the best uh, the best target, especially since that uh, the trade value on that pick was pretty high. So that division is probably not someone to go for. Like, um, yeah, like, not even, I would probably even just look to the West for stuff like that. Like maybe one of those uh, higher teams like the Dallas or, but it's harder for them. Yeah, it's, it's going to be tough to grab one of these picks, but we'll take, we'll take a look around. We'll see if we can't, if we can get something like that. If not, we'll kind of just look for any taker and maybe have like a later first round pick. I'd still like to have two firsts if, if at all possible. So let's take a look at that. See if Calgary would, yeah, they're listed as a champion team. They may in fact want to give up that pick. They do. It's about the same value as that Tampa one. So let's kind of try to see what their chances would be of making that postseason. They're two points behind the Sharks. They could surpass them. The next team down is Edmonton, and they're not going to want to give it that pick, and they're pretty long ways off. Minnesota might be possible, but they're, again, two points out of a wild card spot. The best kind of chance to take would be on a team like Calgary, I think, as long as we don't give them any sort of roster player. If the Sharks can maintain the lead, I don't think the Calgary's not going to snag a wild card spot. There's six points out, uh, only two points out of that next spot. So yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit of a gamble for sure. But is that a gamble we want to take? Maybe. You know, they're listed as a champion, but what's their kind of situation like? Is their goaltender's really holding them back? Oh, they do have Riddick, who looks like he got some stat growth there. So he had a very good year, playing decently this year. What is their issue then? They have a pretty strong team, fairly strong defense. They do have an injury right now. Huh. Seemed a bit interesting that they're out of the playoffs and having such a rough year. Yeah, especially considering those Sharks lines. Very interesting, yeah. They don't want to give up that pick. It would be easier to grab, but they don't want to give it up. Value-wise. Yeah, and anything we do right now is going to be a risk unless we just trade for something low. And there's no even guarantee that we can even have, come up with a value for a pick like this because we don't have a whole lot to throw at him. We have the uh, starter goalie, and that only gets us so far. We'd still have to throw in some other kind of prospect. So I don't even think we'll really be able to grab something like this because we'll either have to throw in top sixes Or low elites, which I don't have. We don't have enough book on any of these guys. So probably the best bet is to just... Silverthorn would be a guy maybe to go for. But this is a right-handed guy. I don't want to give those a, <laughs> a right-hander up yet. Yoens, who maybe is a guy. But still, that's not even close to enough value. Where that can get us like a late first maybe. So I really don't think we'll be able to snag any of these picks here. We got to just look for a team who's in the playoffs. We got to maybe hope that they don't win the cup. Like... Anaheim, I don't think they'll win the cup. 
That uh, doesn't look like a strong enough team to win the cup, but they do have Gibson. And Gibson can steal. Although I don't think he's doing exceptionally well. Oh, never mind. Yeah, if he has a really good playoff run, they could go far. You gotta just kind of hope they don't, I guess. <laughs> or look for something else. Their list has a hopeful that won't work. Interesting record. And they should, if they do make the playoffs, they shouldn't go too far. They don't want to give it that pick. But that's at least more obtainable value. Let me take a quick look at that. They want this uh, goaltender prospect. Mm. Let's see about one of those low top sixes. Or we only have one of them. Yeah, the only thing I'd be willing to throw in in addition to this is the top six defenseman. Yoansu. That's really the only thing I'd be willing to, And it is another right-handed guy, so that is harder. Honestly, I might just look for the best possible team and just want to trade away this goaltender. I don't want to keep trading away a bunch of prospects here. If I can help it, sometimes it can't be helped, but man, if I could help it. How about Dallas? They don't want him. But they were kind of in a spot where they may fall out. Would that go through straight up? Probably not, since they don't want staples. So better. Need a better suitor here. Philly, they don't want him. San Jose wants this, but they don't want to give it that first. I mean, we could maybe still go for this, but I think, yeah, that the value is just too high because where they're sitting in the standings. Anaheim, honestly, might be the best bet here. Uh, of course, they don't want to give up that pick, though. But that's a lot closer. If we have to sacrifice the top six right-handed, I will. Because it'll it'll be worth it. But man, I wish that pick was on the on the block there. Where is he? Yonsu. It's very close, but the fact that this isn't on the block, it makes me think that it won't go through. But we're going to give it a shot. Yeah, let's give that a shot here. It might work. No, not where it needs to be at all. That is tough. Tough scene. Who's another just really, really strong team? They're listed as a hopeful, though, so they probably don't want to give up that pick. Yeah. Damn it. All, all the good... Freaking all the really good options are like don't want to give it that pick. All the hopefuls are killing their division, which is dumb. All right, this one is at least on the block. So maybe because it's at least on the block, but because they're listed as a, I don't know. Let's just keep these two in there so I don't keep taking stuff out. That could go through. You know what? Since he's on, since that's on the block at least. Yeah, they might not want these, but they want to give that up. So I think this could actually go through. I might be able to snag something from next year as well. I just want to count my picks from next year to make sure we don't go over anything. I think we just have the seven. Yeah, we just have an seven. Okay. But they are listed as a hopeful for next year, so it couldn't be too high up. Yeah, I was hoping for a third. I don't think that'll happen, though, for next year. The value still looks similar, so let's see. Uh, no, not where I need to be. They're not particularly interested. Let's keep going down. I want to see if I could actually get something from next year. Just to start on that process. Extra sal- What extra salary? You're not spending anything. You dumb bastards. What? Goddamn, the AI. You just talk about how the AI is stupid in this game. You're literally not taking on salary. What a joke! <laughs> oh my god, this game. This game, though! Fuck's sake! There's These guys are literally unsigned. I mean, maybe, I think you'll have to sign staples or maybe. I don't. But they're two. They're two. They're entry levels! God! Why is this game so stupid? What's your. You don't have a first. You have a first for next year. Could just grab that, but I want a first from this year, damn it. Oh my god. 
<laughs> are we going to be SOL for this? Like, are we really just about to strike out? That's a bit too high, I think. We won't be able to get any additional pick, but let's try for Washington's, I guess. I might be able to get an additional pick, even though stuff on my block isn't matching. Okay, they accepted that. Uh, maybe I could have got more than a fifth, but okay, we got that. We got a fifth from next year. Might have been able to swing for a fourth, but that's not the biggest of deals. We at least made it go through. Everyone laugh at Philly's GM. He's a dumb fuck. <laughs> Jesus. Ooh, we're going to sign guys. I don't want to have to sign any two entry levels perhaps next year. I don't even know if they'll have to be signed next year. I think we picked up staples in this last draft, so it's like, you're dumb. You're just dumb, Philly. Okay, well, we made the trade happen. We navigated the assess pool that is the EA GM AI. A lot of uh, acronyms right there, but we made that work. So I believe we're uh, kind of ready to get going. I did see a suggestion for a line swap. Was that to actually swap Dzingle and Lafreniere? Now, I don't know if you're talking about power play. Probably not because um, they're on the same line. But I think you're talking about for this one. The problem is Dzingle's the kind of shooter on that line. And without him shooting, we do not have anyone really taking shots. Although 120 shots isn't bad. That's a two-way forward. 156 is a lot more. And he's only got 100. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave Lafreniere where he is, I think. It's kind of just what needs to happen, I think. Because while, yes, it may work, Dezingle is the bigger shot taker. We wouldn't have enough shots on that line if I were to put uh, Lafreniere there. So I'm going to hold off on that. Yeah, I think so. And I do still have the uh, goalie rotations turned on. They have a very similar number of games played. I want Dell to get those better stats again. And if he maybe gets over 40 games played, which I don't know he will at this point, we can get him some extra games uh, towards the end if we need to, to try to get that up there. I just want to see if we can get his stats back to the where they need to be. And then, uh, where the f heck is it? That's, I went too far. Where is it? Heck's goalie rotations way up here. Okay. Get that auto rotations back on. No one reminded me and I remembered. That is perhaps a first here on the channel where I don't forget. So if they go back to uh, automated rotations, I don't know if we'll play 10 games. I'd have to split time fairly evenly. So we'll likely have to give them some extra games there. But it'll all depend. I mean, if he can get his stats back to where they were, then yeah. But if he can't really get his stats back towards the 2.3, which may be difficult, we'll have to see. He'll have to play pretty lights out here. You know what? I want to check on some extensions too. Before before we, before we sim here, I got my phone next to me too, so that'll help. Yeah, 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 yeah. We do have some uh, stuff coming up. Brady Kachuk as well as Logan Brown. Let's see. Ooh. Eight's a bit too much then. Let's do five because that'll line him up uh, with Marner actually because we signed him last year, I believe. Or. Yes. See, so yeah, I won. Yeah, so five. So he's got six right now. Yeah, that'll be five. Perfect. That'll work. And you know, that's not too bad of a deal for Brady. That'll be, yeah, 6.25. For five years, that's a solid uh, extension. We'll get, we'll be able to get the uh, production necessary out of him, definitely. So we'll do that. Uh, Logan Brown, I definitely want to sign. Ooh, he wants just a bridge. Three years is not too big of a jump. It goes up when I hit four. Let's do three then, because that's a bit better of a deal. And we can get him for two point six on the dot. Like that for three years. That's a solid extension for Logan Brown. Good for us. Good for him. Dezingle doesn't want to come back, so I'm not going to bother with that yet. Let's get Batherson. I know I want to hold on to him for at least two or three years. He wants a three-year deal. That's perfect. Lines him up with Logan. And that's a... Oops. I times it by 85. Don't do that, kids. You don't want to be... You know, spend 200 mil on a guy. Especially this guy. All right. We can get him for that for three years. Solid bridge deals, tiered contract system. Uh, 
It's not paramount that I sign this guy, but I might want to. Let's see, what's he looking like? Is this a guy I would sign? Yeah, he's solid enough. It's another lefty. What kind of extension does he want? Oh yeah, that's that's doable. I'm not gonna bump him to three years either. We can get him for under a mil, so. I'll get him for right there for a couple years. And that's a depth contract. Even if he only plays depth, that's a solid depth contract, so. We're good with that. Uh, Dell would need to come back. I do like him as the backup, and he won't start declining yet, so I actually might extend him. Also, just to uh, maybe, <laughs> if he does end up getting stat growth, which is looking less likely at this point, we will already have him extended, uh, so we won't have to worry about that. And Markstrom isn't going to get any sort of stat growth this year, so next year we might want to extend him for an extra year in case he does really, really well, which I don't know that he will, but we'll see. All right, that'll take care of the extension side of things. Yeah, I was on all skaters, so nothing else. And that should do it. I believe we're ready to go now. So let's get simming. Let's see what happens the rest of this year. And I will, I'll save some games. Okay, New York's the last game. Let's sim up to about, I don't want to go too far. Let's sum it to about here and see how many, see how Dell does if he can improve his stats. If not, then I'm just not going to worry about it. Uh, Kachuk accepted the offer. Good. La Lahua, Dell, Brown, all of them. Good. Tough loss there. Win, win. I hope Dell was in that game. Any really good game. I can't even deal with him being in that game. A lot of one goal against games. Yeah, we're seeming to keep the puck out of the net relatively well. Just, I want to see low scoring if we're going to lose at this point. <laughs> oh, God. Injured knee for Balsers, March 17th. He ain't out for long, but it's pretty tough. Who goes in on that third line now? I could put up Norris. It's just Zach Smith, right? No, we have Eakin. Let's put the captain back in, I guess. He'll play on the fourth line. I'll move up Norris. Okay, we want someone else on the power play. So who do we, who is it? Who are we missing? Warrell we could put on the point. He does have a decent shot at least. I know he's not the greatest, but I want him to get extra time. We're all honestly just put Zach Smith in for the three on threes. He Balsers is now for too long. And we're not trying to win every single game in min-max in that way, so. Put the captain with the young guy. Oh, good. Now Marco Scandella's out. <laughs> All the injuries going to happen now when we were maybe trying to improve Dell's stats. Okay, cool. Oh, that's a tough one. Balsers is back. Good. Let's get him right back in there. Was oh, he a left winger? Get him in there. Put him back on the power play. Warrell probably didn't get anything. Oh, wait. Or did he already have that? He might have already had that. Unless he got a goal. I thought he only had one goal, two assists. Maybe he didn't. Or one goal, two points. Maybe he had that. But if he didn't, good for him. Tough loss. Yeah, it's not looking like uh, anything's improving much. I'll check his stats, but I'm not going to go too crazy now. Come on, scouts. Give us more. Get friggin' to him and in. Reassigned you assholes and everything. There we go. We got a low elite right winger power forward. Gem as well. What's he looking like? Eh, I don't like the weak defensive consistency. Especially for a power forward, but we'll see. Still a low elite. Still need some more, though. But yeah, these these right here, these are all guys to... to go for with the uh, late first. Part of the reason I kind of wanted it. If we couldn't get that, you know, possible lottery. 
slot. So yeah, 31, 36, and 7. I don't think Arendelle would have gotten an insane boost to his stats or anything. But we got some games left. No, it's actually just getting worse. I'm just going to leave it. I, we're not going to get stat growth with him. Also, if like he could have played lights out in the few games that he played, then yeah, he could have you know helped his average out. And then we could have maybe tried for it, but that's just not happening. So let's just sim up to the end of the season now and let things play out. Belleville's crushing it. That's good. Our young guys. Okay, you know, no, no, cool. Oh, that's okay. Luckily, that's only Belleville. I didn't want to have to call up a goaltender, and I don't have to. Yay. Well, that's up to a 74. Pretty sure none of these guys are actually under contract. Auto rotations will take care of that. Nice shutout. <laughs> ah! I just want the season to end. That's all. That's all I want is for that season to end. God damn you, Dell. Looks like he was in for that shutout game. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay, well, at least call it Nilsson. Since he's almost back, no waivers. Wait, he will have to get, he will have to clear waivers if he gets sent down though, yeah. So let's actually call up Holette. I don't want, yeah, I want him for the playoffs for my AHL. I don't know, don't want to lose that. I want as much experience for my AHL guys as possible. So Holette's going to go in there, have fun, enjoy. We're going to put Nilsson back in. Partially injured, it's a risk. A risk I'm not willing to take. I don't want him to get re-injured for the playoffs. They're going to make the playoffs regardless. Now he's... Okay, it was... Okay, I could have done it, but whatever. There we go. Fully healed. Don't get re-aggravated, please. Marco Scandella's back. That'll be nice. All right. And just four games left, no more injuries. Nice victory right there, eight to two. Get some goal scoring, have some boys. And then get to shut out in a couple games and then lose that one. So 34, 40, and eight. When's the NHL season ending? There we go. All right. So yeah, we didn't have too horrible of a record, but it's definitely not good enough. And we will still sort of be in the lottery class. So let's overview how the season kind of ended here. Marner had a 64 point year, and on this team, that's pretty darn good with his line mates. Oh, we actually came in last in the division. Okay, cool. Uh, goals four per game wasn't terrible. Goals against is obviously bad. Power play just kept going, getting worse and worse. Penalty kill got a bit worse as well, but it was in the mid eighties all year. And honestly, it was the best in our division. So that's a bright spot. We know we got some solid defensive type players and all of them that we had on there are guys that are likely sticking around for a while, at least on the forward end. So that's a, that's a bit of a silver lining there, our penalty kill. I'm going to remember those penalty kill lines and try to match them next year. So 64 point year for Marner. Oh, Kachuk didn't quite hit 60 points, but he did have a 31 goal season. At age 21, solid. Logan Brown had 51 points, nice. Shabbat had 47. Maybe if he had five extra games, he could have got three more points, unlikely. Uh, Colin White, 42-point year. Batherson with 39 points. Zingle with 38, but he got 20 goals. Bolsters with 37. Norris had 36 points. Lafreniere had 30 points in rookie year. Playing fourth and third line. A little bit of power play at the end. He got seven assists on the power play since he got put on it. So, yes. Keep it. Lafreniere should be on the power play. Definitely. He got some good production. Brandstrom, 23 points in his rookie year. Three points on the power play. Uh, Worrell, only 20 points in the season, playing on that third line. Pajot, 20 points in way less games played. So we'll see about Worrell. We need him to grow, but mostly we need his offensive awareness to grow. Everything else is growing well. We really need that offensive awareness to get up there. Like he need that needs to go up to at least high 80s. Like 88 is what I want that at. 
His shot's good. His passing will be good. His defense is pretty solid. He's got good face-offs. This guy really is almost a dream center. Maybe, probably will maybe even cap out at, uh, depending on what we can draft, if we can somehow pick up a really strong center. This guy could be a phenomenal exploit, uh, a matchup exploiter on the second line center and with some penalty kill time and stuff. We'll have to see. He might even be able to be first line center. He probably will be for a while. Anyway, take a closer look at our defense. Shabbat was a plus. Scandella and DeMello were pluses. So we had three pluses at the end of the year, which is not too horrible. And goaltender wise, poor Aaron Dell. He didn't get injured, just played a few more games and got a few more great performances. He might have had a slim chance, at least getting a couple boost, a couple overall boost for his, uh, for some stack growth. But Markstrom, yeah, not amazing. That's okay. That's all good, though. Let's take a look at all our rookies, see how they stacked up. You know what? Decent production. Yeah, we have five rookies this year. <laughs> it's kind of insane. No rookie goalies. All right, you know what? I want to see anyone standing up for Warrell fought twice, Scandella fought once, Zach Smith fought once. He didn't even play, he didn't even play that much. Played in 14 games, he fought. Beast. Yeah, not a whole lot of toughness on this team yet. All right. So let's check the entire don't even Okay, I'm still sorted by fights. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, Kyle Clifford led in points." Just kidding. Uh, Ovi Ovi, a 101-point year at age 35, 55 goals. Ooh, looks like Sagan's going to beat him for the Maurice Richard, but Ovi will still be taking home some hardware. Yeah, Sagan with uh, 57 goals. The assist leader is William Nylander with 71. If only, right, Leaf fans? If only. All right, plus minus leaders. Aho, Teravainen. Looking pretty darn good here. See like three teams at the top. Dallas, Carolina, and Washington. Who's the most clutch? I'd say Tarasenko because he's only got 38 goals and he had 10 of those are game winners. Power play goal leader. Evgeny Malkin with uh, 18. Power play point total leader. Eichel and Malkin are tied with 30 points. Who got the most shorties? That'd be uh, Leipzig and Komarov with three each. Don score with four, sh four shorthanded points. Soderberg with four. Cool. Let's check those uh, defensive stats. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly making another strong case for himself for that Selkie. Top face-off percentage. More giveaways, but... Or, sorry, more takeaways, but also more giveaways. More block shots. Same amount of hits as Barkov. See about that. Plus minus. Plus nine. He lo he's looking like a shoe-in right now. Got to see about Taves, though. Nope, not a good good enough shoot off, uh, face off percentage. I'd say this is a uh, roar the whole way, man. Yep, looking like he's a shoe in for that Selkie. All right, Eric Carlson. He actually did it. He actually got the most amount of points. I don't know if anyone guessed him. <laughs> Eric Carlson with 64 points. Not too bad. Drew Daddy coming in second with 62. So you know he's going to win the Norris because he's due for it. All right, but top point scorer, Eric Carlson, EK65. Let's check out the tendies. All right, Sergey, Sergey Bobrovsky, and I'd say no one's even close enough to him to make it a contest. Gibson, maybe, but too much of a difference in save percentage, too much of a difference in goals against Bobrovsky. Looks like he just crushed everyone's hopes and dreams. Great year from uh, Bob. If you can present a solid argument as to why Gibson should be tied, I'm all ears. But Bob has not beat in save percentage goals against almost as many shutouts, more wins. Yeah. Hard to make an argument against him. All right, Oliver Wallstrom, welcome to the league. 70 points, 41 goals. Don't know what is he's looking like. But uh, yeah, Calder, Calder for sure for Oliver Wallstrom. I'm not, 
Wouldn't even bother to look at goalies, except I do like looking at rookie goalies just to see any up and comers. Ned Yelkovic had a solid uh, rookie year there. Yeah. All right, and let's check out the fun stats here. Hit leader. Uh, Christian Fitcher with 179. Weak. No one even hit 200. And fights. Kyle Clifford, McDermott, Tom Wilson, Bertuzzi. Uh, the fights are slacking now. But we'll see a big resurgence in those in a few years when all those new two-way forwards and shit enter the league. <laughs> oh, man. NHL goes right back to the 80s at that point. All right, so last but not least, check out some progress reports here to wrap things up. As well as... Whose pick did we grab? I already, I already forgot. It was Washington's, right? Yeah, they're in the playoffs. Hopefully they... Uh, or was it Washington? I forget. Good memory. Ah, yawn. Okay. Anything? There we go. Where else? Was that even more than he had before? Don't think so. Maybe in other places, but not to where we want it. Yeah, I don't think we got a whole lot that changed since since we last saw. Besides Branstrom? Mm, no, I don't think so. All right. In the system. Quentin Mathers, I think that's actually a bit more growth. That's 63 now. Kulikov now. Yeah, I know that was the same. Yeah, maybe not a whole lot more. Except for Aginla. That was... That looks like more. So that's good. And hopefully some off-season growth for him. Get him closer to 20. Or 70 at age 20. You know you know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I look for by now. Odell is gonna probably enter the league next year, dude. He's 6'5". That's so sick. <laughs> Filthy. Love it. All right, but we got some good overall growth this year. Could have used more from uh, Kozlov here. I think that changed. I remember it being higher earlier. Maybe not. But he should also get some offseason growth. So hopefully we get a combination of a lot of things. Offseason jumps. All the natural growth from the season. And uh, we could be in good shape. But we got the max picks for this uh, coming draft. And that's what we will be doing in this next episode so i hope you guys enjoyed it remember to leave that like and i'll see you guys in the next one if watching my videos just isn't enough sin for you be sure to go over there on twitter and shoot me a follow and you could even join our discord server as well to talk with some of the other sinners out there the links to both are in the description